These are Militech Cyber Gorilla Arms. Powerful items like these may be gotten through mission rewards like mentioned. Hey guys, Dantix here, back with another Cyberpunk 2077 video. A big one today, going through the massive amount of info we gained during the latest Night City Wire and other sources. We're covering stats and stealing cars, unique car drop-down menus, rewards, combat music, gear, clothes, environmental traversal, appearance, and more. Well, and then I'm gonna break down points of interest in the style and diner trailers. There's really a lot, so buckle up, this will be a doozy. Before we start though, be sure to check out my competitions running in the description, and don't forget to sub since you can always unsub when you're no longer interested. Also, if you're feeling up to it, a like and comment goes a long way. Alright, I want to talk a little bit about music first. There will be radio stations that you can listen to in your vehicles. As you're walking around, there won't be much ambient music. Instead, they want you to focus on what's around you. The sounds of cars, people, guns, fistfights. This might lead you to a side objective as you hear people fighting in the distance. Music will play during epic moments though, like in combat or during particular story moments. There will be unique combat tracks with different enemies, in particular different gangs, which brings the feel of the gang to the moment. Now, some new information about vehicles to supplement my last video. The first is that it's confirmed that tech helps you steal parked and unoccupied cars, which makes sense since you'll need to know how a car works to break in, while you need strength to steal cars from occupants as you're using force. My thoughts are the high the higher quality of the car, the higher the corresponding stat you'll need. There will be badass modified individuals in the more expensive cars after all, or perhaps you simply won't be able to hijack cars like the Rayfield as they're armoured and have high security. What's more notable though is that you cannot keep stolen cars. You can drive them around but they aren't yours. Roach in the Witcher series can be summoned to Geralt at any time, and so can a car you own. If you steal a car, I imagine leaving it somewhere will cause it to be stolen right back and therefore despawn. If you want to own a car, you'll need to earn it in some way. We know through the Rides of Night City trailer that you can earn a Vilfort for competing in a street fight, so I imagine there are other avenues like street races in which people will put up their rides as a prize. It was mentioned that you should always bring a gun to these races so they probably will get dangerous. Also, we know that fixers will allow you to buy cars from them and that some may be given as quest rewards. Depending on your life path and choices, some cars will be unique to you. So you may earn a few different vehicles throughout your playthrough and can select them with a drop down menu. These cars can then be summoned to your side. They'll also all be unique and no reward car wise will be the same. I also want to point out, like I did in the previous video, that there is no car customization in the game. You won't be able to tune them and modify. I really hope this feature is added in expansions as the cars have turned out to be a major draw for me as they look so damn detailed. Instead, there are a ton of vehicle models and within those models, different varieties. If you want more information, you can check out my rides and hypercar video. But basically, you can have a rusted down, broken down version of a Mai Mai and a brand new one or potentially a Nomad modified version or one with gang colors. They, they they all seem to handle differently and go different speeds and different have a different interior. So there's bound to be a customized car you like. Speaking of how different each car is, like I've already mentioned, <laughs> Nomad cars are heavily customized and that comes with an increased durability and some perks. One of which is the fact they will simply drive better off road since they're built for the Badlands. The devs spent a huge amount of effort making sure they sound correctly as well. What we saw is they recorded over 40 vehicles and sampled those sounds to bring us a unique sound for every Chew 2 guzzling engine in the game. Some people are worried that vehicles would be clunky and hard to drive based on how they looked in earlier trailers. We can safely say that this won't be the case based on what we see now. Even the tiny Mai Mai looks to handle like it should. With sports cars able to drift and do burnouts and higher end cars like the Rayfield talking to you like Knight Rider. I assume they'll also have some kind of assisted driving tech allowing better handling at the very least. Speaking of better handling, it was confirmed again that you can't own flying cars. Although some people doubted that when I mentioned it the first time. You can, however, own Johnny Silverhand's Porsche 911, which was made in 1977 and would therefore be 100 years old in the game. It is, however, only the exterior. At this point, it's heavily modified. 
I understand why CD Projekt Red put in the game, you know, a little bit extra money from a Porsche collab, and I can't blame them for that, but I personally won't be riding around in the car from the 1970s when I have so many badass futuristic monsters to choose from in the 2020s. I don't judge anyone that does though, it's a, it's a nice car. But now let's talk map. We've seen very diverse areas of Night City. City Project Red want you to feel like you're in a different city biome when you visit a new district, and even the different sectors of each district will have their own feel under the theme. We know that wall running and latching with cyberware like the Mantis Blades is no longer in the game, but apparently you can still unlock ways to double jump and charge jump, which will aid in positioning yourself advantageously before a fight. In particular, certain builds will have different routes for you to utilize. Routes meaning ways for you to approach. You might even wait until night as there'll be less people for you to deal with. The time of day and weather affects the city, with people hiding under umbrellas and indoors when it rains. You'll even catch people peeing in alleys and going about their business dynamically. You can go anywhere, even, even here. Philip Weber says only an idiot will try to infiltrate it since the richest people afford the best security, but you can be that idiot and no doubt an idiot with awesome rewards. I spoke of the Mantis Blades, well it turns out you can acquire cyberware as rewards. If you complete particular quests, cyberware can be one of the things you get at the end, just like cars and weapons, but you won't be sure of the reward you're going to get from a chain. The devs wanted you to not just take missions and choose outcomes simply because of the reward they offer. These will be there for you to discover. If you see a gun you particularly like on a person's hip, maybe get them to like you and they'll offer it as a reward, but maybe just kill them, like, like I won't judge. You have gear that impacts your stats, and you have cosmetic gear that influences how you look overall and offers small resistances. You'll be given both as rewards as well. These can be swapped in and out, however full body outfits take up all the slots and provide their own set bonuses. I suspect these will be, you know, gang and corpo related outfits tied to quests and may even help you to blend into those particular groups. Well, <laughs> I hope so. Now let's break down the diner cinematic. First, we can see a Fixer and V chatting about what V wants. This Fixer hasn't been revealed before, so we don't have any information on him. However, it seems to be before V receives any upgrades. So right at the start of the journey. It feels like this is a scene that won't play out like this in the game and was simply created for a TV ad. We see V getting a subdermal grip which helps with accuracy and also displays a weapons ammo on your HUD which is courtesy of the various Kuroshi eye implants, one of which is shown. It was believed that the Kuroshi eye implant was the only implant that's forced upon a player as you wouldn't have a HUD without it and I believe the devs hinted at this as well. The next is a spine upgrade to strengthen you up. A body upgrade like this will take up the torso slot. Then we see V running away from flying vehicles or drones, which may be something you have to face in the game. This is the future, expect many high tech enemies making your rise to the top difficult. Then we have the Styles trailer with a lot of new information contained within. The first thing shown is the updated appearance customization you get to play with at the start of the game. You get to choose between a feminine or masculine voice, your skin tone, skin type, hairstyle, hair color, eyes and much more. There are sliders with different options. You won't be pulling and molding features like some kind of advanced Mario 64 styling screen. CD Projekt Red probably don't want freaks making their beautiful game look ugly. To the left are even presets you can select if you're not the creative type. I just want to call to attention these magazines. Someone at CD Projekt Red had to draw this ballsy jock strap and that makes me laugh a little. Milfgaard being in the name also makes me smile. Here we see the Shion. I have a feeling that, like when you get a new gun, when you get a new car, you'll be treated to a cinematic animation. This may be that scene here. I sure hope so because this is more beautiful than anything I've seen in a classic Gran Turismo game. Here we are in a Valentino bar next to a female Valentino gang member. Perhaps you can get a mission from her or even get entangled in some way. Then we have two scenes where you're seeing out of Johnny Silverhand's eyes, so to speak. It's unclear if this is a brain dance, a flashback, or something he's showing you through your own mind, but the first is him playing with his gun on stage, and the next is making friends with someone behind the scenes. Then we have some heavily modified females, this one doing something suspicious, and the next, a tiger claw, shaking some dude down. 
not bothering to hide the cybernetics with real skin product. It's not just the men you'll need to watch out for in Night City. Then we see the girl from Night City Y Episode 3 who is being held hostage absolutely owning the thugs with sick moves and her mantis blades in Episode 4. I'm glad this story had a positive resolution. Just to clarify, NPCs and enemies will use cyberware too, so don't think you're going to have an easy ride. Then we get a look at the different styles in Cyberpunk that translates over to not just how people dress, but their vehicles, weapons and more. The first is style over substance, which doesn't matter how things function as long as you look good. Typically low to middle income range. Next is necessity over style, not caring how you look as long as you get the job done, typically reserved for the lower income individuals. Next is substance over style, which is class and functionality over fashion. And this is reserved for the mid to upper level incomes like businessmen. The last is style and substance, which is both functionality and fashion, reserved for only the uber rich like celebrities. I find this cyberware typically utilized by the Tiger Claw gang particularly cool. Apparently they are ECM systems masked by glowing tats and we aren't sure exactly what that does because in cars that's engine control module but, but sign me up anyway. Here's another scene with V dancing with an NPC, so it's pretty clear that this is an option in clubs and bars. Maybe you need to talk to patrons and ask them to dance, and it might be a way to kick off a one night stand. If so, that means you'll be able to engage in sexual activities with most NPCs you see. We know that the actual in-depth romances will be reserved for particular characters like Meredith Stout, which I'll run through soon. These are Militech Cyber Gorilla Arms. Powerful items like these may be gotten through mission rewards like mentioned. Since we see it showcased on a TV show and seemingly given to a man without arms, potentially as an Oprah-esque helping the less fortunate segment, it might be something they're offering their viewers. Also, how is this woman's shirt staying on her body? It should be like flapping about. Speaking of mods, this guy who looks like someone who plays a sport based on the number on his shoulder and the outfit shows off the power of cyber legs, letting you jump high with little effort. Which raises the question, can anyone be a sports star if they get good enough mods that others can't afford? I mean, probably. When talking about necessity over style, we see a limb augment without real skin to cover them, without any flair or dressing. It's purely functional, cheap modifications. But that also means the poor aren't necessarily not dangerous. I want you to look at the detail in this scene. All the things that don't need to be there, but are. A candle on the table that's irregular and dripping. The pizza boxes on the footpath. Trash littered around. Different kinds of trees. Bits of the roof missing. A broken branch on the tree. A bin with rust. Weeds on the nature strip. Smoke rising from the tires. And the transformers on the power poles. Here we see one of the heavily armored Militech heavy duty vehicles. You'll need a lot of strength or tech to steal one of these and will probably need to fight highly trained corpo agents as well to get it. I wonder if this can be earned by making Militech happy, it's always a possibility. So welcome back Meredith Stout. This is during the Maelstrom Gang mission, the same one we saw in the 48 minute gameplay demo, except new and updated visuals. One thing to note is Meredith Stout is now blonde. Because of the lighting, she came across Brunette in the demo when her file photo in the same demo was her as a blonde. So it seems like she was always intended to be this way. Her goon too has received a few upgrades. His arm for one looks a lot more badass. I don't know who this guy is. All I know is his corpo. However, what I do know is there's a nuke going off in the background there. It might be decoration, but as you get punched by this dead man, the mushroom cloud stays where it should be, suggesting this is not a painting. I wonder what's happening out there. All these people are Neo Kish, the upper rings of society with the best possible cyberware and security. I wonder what you're doing around them. This one's hair dynamically moves how it should with her head turned. Then we have Lizzie Wizzy and it seems you can actually interact with her. During my romances video, I suggest you may be able to romance her. Well, it's looking more likely. She's confirmed to be a brain dance star, though she seems like a bit of an idiot. Shit, these hands. Sometimes it seems like I just brush something and sparks fly. Then we get a look at the lifestyle and houses you can aspire to. 
This seems like the granddaughter of Saburo Arasaka, Michiko, as it seems like she's walking next to security that could be part of her firm, Danger Girl. She kind of has that look about her. I know Arasaka will play a major part in the game, so I wonder if you can interact with her. Then we see the TV personality Ziggy G next to the Crystal Palace, a huge space station that I don't think we'll get to visit since the devs have made it clear we won't be going into space. However, it's cool that they included it in the game in some way, though I'm sure this is just a Ziggy on a green screen for a show. Then we see V getting punched by what looks to be security for Arasaka in a club and Jackie getting laid out by another while the Arasaka agent watches both of you. Seems to be a story event of some kind, so we're in for a ride. Then we get another view of Dexter Deshawn taking out V, this time with his bodyguard still alive, suggesting another outcome. God, I hope we can get revenge. Jackie just seems like a great guy. I kind of hope we can stay besties. Just look how happy he is getting these custom pistols. They are pretty dope though. Look at that gold embroidery. Happiness can't last forever though, as the next scene you see him using them while under fire from the tiger claws. Notice the glowing tats. Also notice how they're both not dead, simply knocked to the ground. Was this an ability someone used to knock them down? Or maybe this is what it's like when you use non-lethal rounds. Here we see Victor, your local Ripper Doc that you meet in the 48 minute demo before you take the Dexter Deshawn mission. Except now he either has a brand new place to work or his place of work was updated by CD Projekt Red. He seems happy to see both you and Jackie. Perhaps this is after you pay him back and skipped ahead after the immortality chip. At any rate, I think he still may be a potential romance option for those inclined. And that's all I have for you today. <laughs> was that not enough? Really? It was over 3,000 words. Well, I, I can understand we're so close now, yet so far. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to press that bell because I have much, much more coming soon. Thanks, friends.